Going into EastEnders in 1986 was a very important time for me and arguably a pivotal time. We need to remember that the BBC to decide to put two gay men, non-stereotypical, ordinary gay men, into the most popular show on television, it was pretty courageous. Are you trying to tell me that you and Colin sleep in the same sheets at the same time? In the same bed. There's no law against it, is there? At least not after next week. It's when I come of age. Oh, Barry. What about God's law? Aye? Well, forgive me if I'm misunderstanding you, but are you trying to tell me that you and Colin are homosexuals? When we got the kiss, it was a peck on the forehead. Well, you would have thought I'd had sex with a parrot. There were questions in Parliament. The, the media reaction, the tabloid newspapers in particular, it was vile. The press went berserk, that they wanted the show taken off, and if they weren't going to take the characters out, um, then the show needed to be axed. Interestingly, when we did the second kiss, 18 months later, some negative reaction. By and large, there weren't the calls in Parliament for the show to be axed, and that shows you what courage and leadership does. And I'm proud of that, proud of Colin, proud of my nearly three years in the show. What makes me proud to be a gay man is my 31 years with Paul. He came to London and I met him, and I've been up and down to see him in uh, Scarborough, where we first met. And as he came towards me, that little swagger, and I thought, will he recognize me? <laughs> we didn't kiss, this was, 1983, you didn't, you didn't kiss uh, in public. We went into the gay bar and for the first time we could touch one another without worrying about what anyone would say or anyone would do. And that Monday morning when we went back to King's Cross, we sat there in the buffet. We weren't saying anything, we, we knew at two o'clock he had to get the train back to York and then on to Scarborough. And this 19-year-old boy 13 years younger than me, just leant forward and kissed me on the lips. And I didn't look around the room, he didn't look around the room, and I just sat there smiling and smiling and smiling. And then when we walked to the, uh, the platform, just as he was about to turn away, he kissed me again. I wouldn't be who I am now if it wasn't for him. For a while I felt lost. For a while I felt, yes, it's gonna go wrong, and I looked for things to prove that it would go wrong, and it didn't. I felt liberated, I felt absolutely liberated. Um, and when I uh, went in to the House of Lords, when I was told I was going in, um, a, a friend threw a party and I made this speech, uh, and I saw Paul in the corner, and I realized that actually, I had become the man I've become and I've achieved what I've achieved because of him. When he died four days before I went into the House of Lords, um, the pain that I deal with every day, the absence that I feel every day, I can only deal with that because two became one. My first experience in a gay bar is indelibly printed on my memory. It was 1966 and I was 15 and a half years old and a mate said, I will show you gay bars in London. So off we went down Berwick Street, turned left into Darbley Street and there on the corner of this little mews we pressed a button and we were let down, down these deep, deep stairs and then I walked into this room and it was like I died and gone to heaven. Boys of my own age dancing, cheek to cheek, and it was unbelievable. A world in which I could be myself and a world that I could inhabit without fear or favor. <laughs>